So. OK. Um, yes, it's 11 o'clock and uh, let's start the meeting. So good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you on this bright, sunny morning. I think we've got to make the most of it, haven't we, before it deteriorates over the weekend. <laughs> lots of lovely photographs at the back of lots of you. So yes, lovely views. Um, right, uh, first of all, do we have um, any uh, apologies for absence? First of all, Gareth. Uh, couple of chair, yeah, from Councillor Louise Gibbard, Sarah Perron and Councillor Hugh James. OK, thank you very uh, much. Can I add uh, Tracy McNulty to that as well, please? OK, thank you. Uh, although I think Hugh, Councillor Hugh James may join us a little bit later if he's able to, Gareth. Yes, indeed. indeed. OK, thank you. Um, are there any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests, please? No, none. Thank you very much. The next item then is the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on Friday the 10th of September. First of all, can I have, um, for, for accuracy, uh, first of all, page one, page two, and page three. Are you content that the minutes are accurate? All agreed? I Thank will. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then are there any matters arising which are not covered by Kim's report? First of all, on page one. Page two. Page three. No. Nope. Thank you very much. And I'll hand over to you, Kim, to present your report, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm proposing that uh, maybe I just juggle the order in my report this morning and that we talk about the, the building, uh, get through the minor things, and then we go on to the building, which is obviously the core uh, yes. subject okay. of the meeting. So okay. uh, I'll start with paragraph one, uh, which is about the resumption of service. Um, the Swansea service point is uh, operating now with a maximum of eight, eight people able to attend. Uh, it's not hugely busy, but the, certainly the numbers are picking up. Uh, and as you'll see from the statistics later on in the report, there, there it is an increase uh, over this time last year. Um, it's been, I, I was hoping that I'd be able to report to say that the Neath service point was going to reopen in January and I had a meeting with the health and safety team with Neath Patalbot Council, um, sorry the date, the uh, 29th of November um, and we have established what we believe is a safe means of reopening the service. Um, uh, but however, the Neath Antiquarian Society, uh, the committee decided that they didn't wish to reopen at the present moment and sent an email to myself and to Craig. Uh, so I've asked if we could review the situation in, in March, uh, but obviously it's the, at the society's discretion to, um, to reopen. Uh, what I was proposing that we'd open in the first instance one day a week and um, we would that would be staffed purely by uh, our coast service staff, mm -hmm. so not using the volunteers. Um, and uh, th there would be an issue with ventilation and the, it, it's the coldest time of year and we would have to open windows. So, um, uh, but for various reasons, the society decided that it didn't wish, wish to press ahead with that. Um, so we'll review the situation and hopefully be able to op open on the uh, perhaps the 1st of March or along those lines. I don't know whether any any members wish to make comments on that at all. Any comments from anybody? I guess I guess perhaps considering you have done a, a thorough risk assessment, Kim, perhaps the time of the year was a factor in, in their decision making. Yes, yeah, quite possibly, yes. Uh, so I'm going to jump to paragraph three there, which is the accreditation review. Of course, it does link into um, uh, paragraph one, uh, paragraph two as well. Sorry, um, uh, the uh, 
the archive service went up for uh, an annual review of its provisional status of accreditation and it achieved a an extension of its provisional status for a further year and I've put in the report the comments made by the accreditation panel which I'll just read out for the benefit of members who um, haven't got the papers in front of them. Uh, pleased to see that Swansea Council is seeking appropriate expert advice on meeting relevant standards as part of the preparatory work towards a new home for West Morgan Archive Service. The panel note that to move back to the full award of accreditation, it will be essential to have a plan which meets the needs of collections and their users and safe, safeguards the unique heritage of West Morgan for future generations. A very short statement. Uh, there from them. So we have provisional status until November 2022 there. Although that, <clears throat> that is a short statement, uh, Kim, nevertheless, it is a significant statement, isn't it, in terms of when, and when we look at it in the context of, of the uh, new location for, for the archives, uh, they're sending really quite a clear message in that statement, I feel. Uh, just pause if, in case anybody wishes to make a comment or ask a question or anything. Um, if not, I'll go on. The school service restarted as paragraph four now. The uh, school service restarted uh, this quarter and we have delivered um, uh, several learning sessions um, uh, to uh, two Swansea schools uh, via Microsoft Teams. Uh, this is a possible model for going forward and uh, uh, that, that it does seem to work that we can uh, provide an education session remotely um, and that may be a, a valuable lesson uh, for the future and particularly with regard to uh, traveling out to schools. Um, also, I'd just mentioned that the, the long running uh, item on Black Lives in 18th Century Wales, which is an uh, education module uh, that we've developed in order to provide uh, um, a pilot study for a, an all Wales uh, 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 digitization project. I'm afraid it goes very, very slowly. So uh, I'm afraid there's not very much development since I reported on it last quarter, but um, it has been trialled with teachers. But um, I've got a message back this morning, which I read. It's uh, teachers saying it's been a manic term with COVID and everything else, and they just haven't had time. Uh, I think we can appreciate that you know, schools are, are very hard pressed at the moment, as, as yes. indeed so many other services. So um, they just haven't been able to uh, to look through the uh, thing or provide any feedback. If there is a development, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll report at the next meeting. Um, jumping over the, the next relatively quickly, uh, we took part in a, a, a marketing um, campaign which takes place every year called Explore Your Archive in a, in a very minor way, it has to be said. And then the statistics for the use of the service are there in paragraph five. Andrew, I'm putting you on the spot a bit. I don't know whether you want to say anything about the stats at all or. Um, you compiled them. There's nothing much to say other than that um, the pandemic continues to to drive our numbers down simply because we can't fit as many people in. Um, however, we've got a steady stream of people coming in and we continue to um, deal with a lot of lot more queries remotely than we used to um, pre COVID. So we are dealing with a number of people, but it just doesn't really show up in, in the same sort of way in terms mm -hmm. of, of, of personal visits. Um, the main thing is we, we continue to be open and um, continue to provide the service and the feedback we're getting generally is very positive from people. And it's also worth noting that the numbers are up on this time last year where obviously we were still operating a restricted service so you can see that the number of documents is significantly up. Um, the number of users in Swansea is, is, is up as well. Mm -hmm. Just, just a question, Kim. Is is there any reason why we haven't got the number of hits to the archive website? Because there's NA against that, and the and the subsequent um, numbers. Is there any reason for that? 
Um, so it's, it's, it's not a vital <laughs> thing, but it's just we haven't got the numbers, and uh, it's just I just wondered why. It, it's basically down to how long it takes us to get them. Um, they have to be fished out by a member of the web team, and it takes about a day longer than it than we've got to to provide the the figures. So okay, okay, understood. You do collect yes. them nonetheless. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm I'm sure you do. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, paragraph six. So uh, continue to um, attend professional meetings via Teams, and that's obviously one positive development in the last couple of years. That uh, particularly all Wales meetings that we've realised that Teams is a an effective way of conducting meetings. And then paragraph seven, the accessions of archive collections, which are listed in the uh, appendix two, and. Uh, uh, I just highlight some really interesting documents that came from planning uh, relating to a land use survey in 1949-50, which I think if will be of interest to um, students in particular who are um, looking at the history of the, the area. Okay, uh, are there any questions or comments that anybody would like to make on anything between paragraphs three and seven uh, just make sure that everybody's happy with that so we'll i'll go on to paragraph two which is about the potential relocation of the archives to the proposed um uh, city center hub i have prepared a document for this and i'm going to read it i know it's a somewhat of a departure for me in that um uh i, I but i think it's, it's it's an incredibly complex subject, and uh, I'm sure that you'll appreciate that it's probably better that um, uh, I, I actually uh, make sure that everything's included. Um, and I will circulate this document after the meeting, so you don't necessarily need to take notes if you um, will do it. So I've called it a technical note and I'll circulate it together with the revised risk assessments, which had been uh, circulated to members following the last last meeting. So there are second versions of each of the risk assessments. If you, uh, when you get this, you'll see that I've embedded them in the technical note as well, uh, but I'll, I'll circulate them separately in, in case uh, uh, the embed, embedding doesn't quite work. Okay, so, uh, Picking up from the, um, the for, from from what's in the report um, uh, itself, uh, just repeat a couple of paragraphs there. So, uh, a key question is whether it is possible to integrate a secure archive storage area and functioning archive search room into the multi-use building in a manner which will meet British standard BSEN one six eight nine three. Uh, specifications for location, construction and modification of buildings or rooms intended for the storage or use of heritage collections. And also BS4971, which is about the con conservation and care of archive and library collections. Uh, as members are, are, are sure aware, conformity with these two British standards in turn affects the ability of the service to meet the archives accreditation standard and its status of recognition by the National Archives at Kew as a local place of deposit for public records. As a result of this element of external regulation by Welsh Government and the National Archives, they are the ultimate arbiters on whether the proposal meets the relevant criteria. Uh, they have both now made their uh, uh, preliminary decision and the non-binding advice of the National Conservation Service has also been sought. Um, you're going to have to wait till the end of uh, what I've got to say before I <laughs> reveal that. Um, all, their in all their comments are in incorporated into the following narrative. Uh, the reason uh, is that everything is hedged around with caveats and so on. So I think we need to go through the caveats in, in great detail uh, before that. There are three key documents on which the decision depends. Uh, a fire risk assessment, a security risk assessment and a thermal modelling report. And these were reissued in a second version by the multidiscipl multidisciplinary team. That's uh, I'll refer to them as the MDT from now on, on the 26th of November. So everything's happened in the last 
couple of weeks and in, in some cases in the last couple of days. So what I will do is circulate the fire risk assessment, the security risk assess assessment and the thermal modeling report versions two after this meeting. However, I'm going to deal with them now uh, in summary here. I'm going to start with the fire risk assessment. The original fire risk assessment identified that the BHS building structure currently has a fire resistance of only one hour and concluded that because the fire risk was considered to be low, there was no need for any strengthening of this level of fire resistance. This original document also referred to the British Standard 16893 as a guidance document rather than as a nationally recognised standard. I, I think if you've listened to me over the last few months, you will have um, recognised that I had considerable concerns about both of these aspects of the original uh, report. As a result of pressure, which uh, obviously I exerted, but also I'm grateful to those members who have also uh, taken up the baton and ex exerted pressure as well, for which I'm very grateful. A decision was made by the MDT to increase the fire resistance of the building structure. This will be accomplished by ap applying a coating to the concrete structure to bring it up to two hours fire resistance. Furthermore, a sprinkler system will be installed in all parts of the building other than the archive store to also provide two hours fire resistance. Now, if you attended the uh, extraordinary meeting, the, the meeting, the presentation from, of, from the NDT, which has occurred in between uh, since the last Arcos committee, you'll be aware that this was announced at the meeting. Um, it, uh, that was the first time I'd heard of it, actually. I think we were a little bit caught on the wrong foot in that it was, was announced there. This is a, a concession with regard to a recognition that the uh, the original fire risk assessment, which said one hour is perfectly sufficient for an archive store, um, and uh, because the fire risk was so low, so uh, I've been able since that meeting to go into to greater depth in the um, by uh, looking at the second fire risk assessment and also our external arbiters, uh, the uh, Wel Welsh government, National Archives, and Chris Woods of the NCS have uh, also pronounced on it. So of this decision, uh, Chris Woods of the NCS says, regarding fire resistance, the strategy is a reasonable one, improving the resistance of the structure and fitting sprinklers to the rest of the building to try to ensure that a fire is extinguished before the building collapses. Horrible thought. And allowing for a two hour resistant, resistant store structure against heat crossover. This is an appropriate strategy in my view. However, should the council decide that it costs too much to do once they've worked it out, it would not in my view be acceptable to plow on with a substandard project that did not involve this strategy. So there does need to be clarity now about a second stage of decision making should the find, uh, project find itself needing to leave out the necessary protective qualities. I think this needs to be stated at this stage. Uh, so to summarise what Chris is saying is uh, he's saying that it's acceptable uh, that the uh, the proposed methods, however, the council should not backtrack on on these uh, proposed things, saying that well, on second thoughts, it will cost too much, and therefore, in order to save costs on the project, we'll remove these uh, these aspects. So it needs to make a definite commitment that it will actually see see these th things through and not um, uh, not backtrack. This is echoed in the comments of Welsh Government who have inserted the following requirement. Uh, construction throughout the building, which is in bold, must incorporate measures to uplift the overall fire resistance of load bearing structure elements to two hours. Once again, uh, that's emphasized in bold and once again, uh, emphasised in bold, with a two-hour automatic fire, su fire suppression system in accordance with BSEN 12845, which is the sprinkler system. The fire, su fire suppression system should be zoned and service all internal areas of the building outside of the proposed archive strong room. Uh, fairly obviously, you can't have sprinklers in the archive 
the strong room because obviously it would damage the archives more than anything. so everywhere in the building apart from the archive strong room should uh, have uh, a sprinkler system and it should be zoned and it should service all internal areas the archive store should be in an independent fire compartment allowing for two hours fire resistance with the capability of electrical supply isolation and the capability to prevent water ingress in the event of the sprinkler system activating in close proximity. So obviously if you have the sprinklers at, activated on the same floor as the archive strong room, there's uh, the risk that the, um, the water may uh, flow through to the archive strong strong room um, so that has to be considered as well it should be noted that the the above improved measures still represent a compromise on the four hours fire protection stipulated in bs 16893 however it is one which is considered acceptable to welsh government the national archives and to the ncs uh, when you see the revised uh, uh, fire risk assessment. Uh, there is a final sentence which I do take issue with. Uh, the final statement in the revised fire risk assessment that the building will represent, uh, this is quote, state of the art facility in terms of fire safety design and management is, in my opinion, de demonstrably an exaggeration because the, the end result, in fact, resents, represents an acceptable compromise uh, which is acceptable to our regulators. Note that the design no longer incorporates any fire suppression system within the archive storage, its archive storage area itself, as the original fire risk assessment had uh, uh, recommended. However, Chris Chris Woods uh, um, see, uh, said that perhaps if if you have adequate fire fire suppression system outside the strong and there isn't need for one inside uh, in that most most fires start outside the strong room area and especially if you've got the electrical isolation then the, there's very little fire risk within within the storage area itself it, it's noteworthy that we don't have that a fire suppression system within our current strong room area but most most new designs do actually incorporate something Uh, moving on to the security risk assessment and I think in that uh, meeting that we held with the MDT we got so uh, uh, embroiled in the fire risk assessment that we didn't really get on to the security risk assessment um, and so uh, it has been supplied and there is a second version which I'll circulate afterwards. The original security risk assessment looked at the overall security of the building, its location and and building security, including measures to protect the strong room against intruders. However, a proper security risk assessment for the purposes of BSEN 16893 should encompass not only these broader elements, but also operational matters such as the layout of the search room, connections between the search room and the strong room, and facilities for researchers to leave personal belongings outside the search room, so typically lockers, cloakrooms, etc. None of these elements were covered by the original security risk assessment. So a follow-up meeting was held with the MDT for me to go through these elements and explain to them how an archive service functions. The result of this consultation is the second version of the risk assess security risk assessment, which is an effectively which is effectively an ad addendum to the first. The second security risk assessment is essentially a holding document identifying issues which will need to be resolved at a later stage. This is because the location of the archive search room is still undecided and it will depend on a decision yet to be made about the purchase of additional space for the overall buildings project. In case that sounds a little bit um, arcane, I should just explain that there is a proposal for the council to purchase the former Miss Selfridge building and that has not been agreed as yet by cabinet. However, and this is once again, something I can't really say definitely, but should that go ahead, there is a proposal that the, the archive search room would be relocated into the, uh, onto the second floor of the um, former Miss Selfridge building and not in its current location, which is shown on the plans. Um, 
and very shortly I'll, I'll, sh I'll put the plans up on screen so that people can see that because some of this without being able to to look at it you you can't necessarily follow what I'm uh, uh, talking about but some of this is uh, 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 more general the following security related issues have been identified well by Welsh Government in their response and they still require a satisfactory resolution I'm going to quote probably a little bit at length here but uh, we we are still also seeking assurances that operational arrangements for service delivery are sufficient to address potential security risks we understand that this is contingent on further design work and confirmation of the spaces within the, the building allocated for operational use by the archive we note that the security risk assessment offers some in principle assurance and the council and design team are aware of the requirements and confident that these can be met to say that means the council is confident that these can be met as are the N ndt we would however welcome further information on the following points in particular uh, the capacity and location of public access facilities and how these will support service delivery and allow for comparable stroke improved access for the local community when compared to current provision assurances regarding the separation of back office archival processing areas for those open to public access and that necessary security measures are workable for operational security uh, service delivery uh, confirmation of arrangements for transfer of archival documents including outsized items from archive storage to the search room this should include routes that do not compromise the safety and security of the, the collection or flexibility in uh, serving public access needs. That, now I'm going to unpack those statements because I know they're particularly dense, densely written. And I'm probably, if I can, I think it might be uh, an idea for me to put the, uh, the floor plans up so you can see what I'm referring to. So if I hopefully get the right on the second floor um what happens as i'm sure you're aware when you start presenting in teams is that i can no longer see see you or whatever but hopefully you're able to see a second floor plan of the bhs building at the moment is that right yes yes kim yeah. and you'll see this shaded out air is the for, former miss selfridge building which is now uh, what superstore and that's relevant but uh, obviously it's that's subject to uh, uh, further further for decision making which uh, which means that we have to work with these these plans as is um, right uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch I don't know whether this works. So maybe I have to stop presenting and do that. I'm just going to show the search room. Has that moved to the first first floor rather than the second floor? Or are you still looking at the strong room there? Uh, no, it, it, it did move, Kim. Oh, right. OK. Yes. So this is the proposed archive search room. Uh, just moving my mouse around there and you'll see uh, that's uh, that's directly underneath the strong room. And this is a first floor uh, uh, layout plan. Um, so uh, on the first point above, uh, which Welsh Government mentioned, when they talk about the archive search room. So the, the, just to, to recap, I recognise it's, it's probably very difficult to follow this. Um, and I, I, as I say, I will circulate the document, uh, this, this document. The capacity and location of public access facilities and how these will support service delivery and allow for comparable or improved access for the local community when compared to current provision. Um, the point that I would make, the archive search room, which as I say is this, this area here. Can I just check that you, you can follow my mouse on the screen, yes, can't you? Yes, yes. Okay. Kim, that's fine. Okay. Uh, is uh, in the absence of any decision about the uh, the Miss Selfridge building is the only point of reference that we can uh, make in this meeting. I think it's not unreasonable to say that this proposed search room is the smallest or amongst the smallest of any local authority archive search room in Wales. 
um, it's been uh, uh, it, it's actually holds fewer people than uh, um, it's actually drawn there because one of the things about an archive search room going a little bit off script here as you could probably tell um, is that the researchers are not able to face away from the supervising staff so if we look here that's the supervising de supervisor's desk which has got space for two people and then we have three customer desks here so essentially these seats are all not usable because they're actually facing away from the supervisor so you've only got um, six uh, seats facing forwards however no arrangements have been made for oversized documents such as maps here and there's also no um, catalogue uh access point so we have an online catalog and if people don't have their own mo mobile devices in the search room then they have to use desktop pcs so my estimate is, is this will is capable of holding four customers which ironically is the number we have at the moment with during the covid pandemic in the search room but this is meant to last for 25 years and uh, one hopes that the uh, pandemic will have will be over by that point um, and so you know, it's it's r remarkably under uh, undersized for especially uh, I have have talked to uh, colleagues in Welsh government and we think this is the smallest archive search room in the whole of Wales um, smaller than Neath smaller than Carmarthen um, smaller than the Flandrin Dodd Wells uh, and need hardly say that um, Swansea is the second city of Wales. Um, if this is the best that we get, um, it's it just is it, it represents only a fraction of the size of the uh, current uh, um, uh, archive public area. And you'll see that the reception area is this desk here with two staff sitting at it, just essentially uh, reception staff just outside the door to the search room. And this is essentially a corridor this this is dwp agile working area here so library central library is down there and it's essentially a bit of a corridor through for uh, dwp staff no lockers nothing really so um i think we all agree that this is this plan is is unacceptable in terms of you know the the level of service that we're currently able to uh, provide, and it makes very little provision. You know, I'm sure it, these are all wheelchair accessible, but we've got to also to consider that when we uh, uh, we make provision for the archive search room. So you know there'll be a whole rearrangement of this space. Um, the one advantage of this is that there is a document lift. Um, which is gives direct access to the um, uh, the archive strongroom uh, above. However, uh, one has to bear in mind that not all documents fit in the document lift, and we have to be able to trolley things and sometimes physically carry oversized documents. If uh, I'm sure, if you've been on a strongroom tour, you've spotted that we have some very large rolled maps and things like that. Mm -hmm. And also, in our experience, the document lift doesn't work all the time. Uh, it, uh, you know, we we got a new one ten years ago, but it does have periods when it's broken. So, in which case, uh, there would need to be means of uh, transferring uh, archive material between the strong room and the um, uh, and the search room. And in that case, so the security risk assessment should include a. Uh, a walk, a walking route between the uh, the strong room and the uh, the search room, and that we presume is this uh, two sets of lifts and the stairs, and then along here and through there, which, uh, as you can see, takes us through the library and um, into into the archive search room that way past the DWP working area. Um, there, there, there are means of uh, um, trying to deal with some of the, the risks associated with this, but essentially the, the revised security risk assessment, as you'll see, 
um, says that the um, uh, uh, the 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 way to do this would be to to bring documents into the search room out of hours and then lock the search room. So essentially you'd you'd do this after the building when the building was closed, take the take the documents to the search room, then lock the search room and then open it when the when the service starts. Uh, that, that, I think what they haven't thought through there properly is the fact that the building is going to be open late at night. So this would have to be done very early morning, I would think. Uh, but uh, so that's a consideration. Um, Kim, to, just, Kim Sorry. just a very quick question. Don't want to interrupt your flow. But currently, without COVID, how many people can you accommodate in the search room in Civic Centre? Andrew, can you just remind me? Uh, is it um, eighteen? Eighteen. Good lord. Um, no, it's it's twenty one. Twenty one seats, including okay. computers, and that's just in the archive search room in the family history centre. There's about fifteen. So we're we're going down basically from thirty six to to four. Okay, thank you. Uh, it should be noted. There's there's no distinct. Family History Centre in this, and even with the Miss Selfridge thing, there's a, I mean, obviously, there's Family History Provision, that the, the, the PCs are uh, library PCs, but uh, I think that's that's something that I had to accept at a very early stage. Actually, that um, uh, you know there is duplication between the uh, the library and the Family History Centre. And there are two places where you can do family history, but um, yeah, it's it's worth noting that there is so that will affect our figures as such in, in the the figures will only be the um number of users we have in the archive search room and if if you can only take four in a session um that's actually going to have a huge impact on our our figures so, sorry okay. Chair. Can, yeah. I, can i do you mind if i just come in a second the cabinet report which is going to cabinet next week now says the dwp is unlikely to be situated in this building Oh, right. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, that's so I'm, I'm uh, restricted, just, so I haven't seen it. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether these plans are up to date, given, you know, it's also talking about three archives coming into the building. Um, I can't remember the exact number, which ones now. The miners one, I think, um, I'll just find the document. Um, the miners archive and the Jazz Heritage Wales Art Collection, along with the West Morgan Archive Service. So I'm just wondering whether these plans are now are actually up to date. That's a very interesting. Uh, uh, I obviously I haven't not privy to that report, no. which is restricted. So you you probably well, I, I, in, I'm, in... I'm, not, I'm not giving you any restricted information because restricted <laughs> information is around the costings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, and... I haven't been informed of that. So okay. uh, I, obviously, if it's in there, it's in there, and yeah. Swansea members will have uh, access to information that uh, has not been. Uh, I've not been privy to. Yeah, and Jen, uh, Jen also had a question. Jen, do you want to come in? Yeah, thank you. Um, I hear what Peter's saying about whether or not these are up to date. I think part of the problem is the lack of talking to the people who need to be part of the conversation. Just to clarify, on the search room, looking at the desks, there doesn't seem to be provisioned for large desks for unravelling big maps or anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is why I think it goes down to four users, because uh, you need a big desk for big items. If you saw some of our larger maps. Uh, yeah, I've used you know, them. That's why yes. I'm asking. It's based yeah. on personal experience. Um, yeah. I mean, what you need is beyond desks. It's often several large tables pushed together. And the other thing that's not clear there is um, is storage for visitors as to where they can put um, bags and personal items that you can't take in with you. I mean, I can't take my ta handbag in full of ink pens or anything. Where would I store those? Well, provision was not made in the original uh, plan. So these, uh, are, it's rec recognised that they've been superseded and it sounds like from what Councillor Black says that it's actually moved on further than I have knowledge of in that I uh, hadn't been told about that so 
but I, they have recognized I did have a meeting with the architect and I explained the process of how an archive works and it turned out from that that um, uh, uh, the architect had actually worked on the uh, Cornwall Archives and Local Studies uh, building which actually is a really interesting building if you look it up actually if you if you google Cornwall Archives uh, it's a very nice uh, uh, facility in Redruth using an old brewery building a uh, quite impressive uh, thing so he has experience of it so it, it, it's very useful in the conversation to just say well do you remember what you did in Cornwall and uh, say well we want the same because it's one of the things about archive buildings is that really they follow the same pattern mm. you know it should be you you don't have to uh, obviously the conditions individual conditions are um, you know the dictates of the individual building but the function the way an archive functions is the same whether you're going to the National Library in Aberystwyth or whether you're going here or uh, Ebervale for Gwent, Gwent archives it's essentially you know there's the the initial process of registration divesting yourself of your personal belongings then going through to an archive search room which is supervised and um, a quiet study area there's these two balancing things of um, uh, uh, quiet study and also um, security for uh, use of the documents. So, Councillor Reese, you'd like to come in here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you obviously, from what your comments and uh, what you're saying, you were, shall I say, underwhelmed about the provision. Shall I? Shall I, can I put it <laughs> bluntly? Um, <laughs> if if my question is, if this committee, if this panel decide that this is not suitable, what what authority and what power do we have to, to reject it uh, over and above any decision made by, uh, by another another uh, a, uh, panel or another or the council or whatever? Well, the Archives, Archives Committee is just an advisory body. And I think everything here is for information only. Um, the decision will be made ultimately by Swansea Cabinet, I uh, believe. And, and obviously there are issues uh, um, whether it's the right thing for the archives. Uh, and that's, I'm hopeful. <laughs> I, you're reading into, I, I, I suppose my, my attitude has is, is fairly uh, obvious. Uh, from that but however I do believe it's possible in many of much of this to work with the NDT to obtain a satisfactory resolution but I think ultimately I would say that the uh, the arbiters and I'm quite happy to put it uh, put the uh, the decision as to whether it meets the standard to Welsh Government and the National Archives in that if if our external arbiters say that this meets the standard, then I, I am uh, very willing to accept accept that. You know, over and above my reservations about the uh, uh, the the facilities. I, I do say this at the end. I'll probably say this now, actually. But the, can, I, can, can I just come in, Kim, again, yeah. just to say that if if we as a panel feel that the facilities are not as good as the ones we've got at the moment and the uh, public the public deserve the best service that we can give surely that must have some effect on any decisions that are made uh, Councillor Black wants to uh, uh, perhaps yeah. add, make a comment on that I, I was going to say, Chair, that actually at least Batalbert has a bigger say than this committee because this is joint service. So if Councillor Rees um, takes it up with his own authority and, and makes those representations to Swansea, then that they would have to listen to your authority as opposed to the archive committee because it is a joint service. And so, you know, Nice Batalbert needs to exercise its own say in this and, and get, get its own assurances as part of that. I um, also just want to add that we have got this in front of the scrutiny committee on Tuesday. It is a closed session, but um, I'm making notes of questions which are being raised here to ask in that scrutiny session. Thank you, Peter. I, I, I get together with uh, with officers uh, in the authority and we'll see what we can do. Uh, Councillor Jones yeah. would like to make a comment. 
thank you. Yeah, I would say, you know, obviously the point that uh, Kim made about meeting the standard, but that's one thing. Being fit for purpose is quite another. And looking at the reduced number of seats available and everything else, unless that dramatically changes, then it's not going to be fit for purpose. Uh, uh, yeah. Take on board those comments. Um, I I have to say that I'm obviously working with out of date uh, um, uh, floor plans because there is this issue. Uh, also, Councillor Black has mentioned that the the proposal to move the Jazz Heritage Archives in the South Wales Miners Library, which is would necessitate, uh, I would think, a radical revision of the floor plans. Uh, can, uh, can, can I check? Can, can I just say, because I'll be in the cabinet meeting on Thursday, can I ask it be minute that I didn't take part in this discussion? I listened to the discussion, but I, you know, rather in, in case a question of predetermination comes up, um, can it be minute that I did not take part in this discussion, although I, I did stay and listen? Okay. Uh, just just a comment on on fit for purpose. Members who are at the presentation from MDT will probably recall that we were given categoric assurance that this was in fact a much superior provision than what is in the civic centre at the moment. And quite clearly, even just on this one point about um, uh, accommodation for people coming in quite clearly there is a significant deterioration in provision in these new proposals. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Shall I? Uh, I'll proceed. Yeah. Oh, uh, Louise Miskell. Louis, uh, yeah. Um, thank you. Just wanted to make a brief point, Kim, um, which relates to something that came up in your report earlier as well, and this is about accommodating groups um, and speaking from the perspective of university as well it's always been a very important part of the service that we have been able to bring groups of students to the archives you know whether it's school groups whether it's groups of university students to do on-site classes now from what you've just shown us it doesn't look like that would be in any shape or form possible um, and I wondered whether that could be something that was raised in terms of you know, reinforcing the point about the size of the facility that's needed. Uh, thanks, thanks, Elise. Um, there is a uh, education room, multi-use education room. I, I, this isn't all negative, my report, <laughs> which I uh, will still uh, I will get to the end of. But there, on the positive side, there is an education room which is for use by the library, also for li by lifelong learning and other things, which is one of the. The plus points of the the building um, and one assumes that we would book that and would be able to take documents there uh, as necessary but yes the on that on that size of archive search room there wouldn't be um, um, uh, would be ability to to host group visits in the in the uh, uh, in the archive search room yeah, perhaps a, a question there, Kim, to be answered, as it is a multi-use education room, that's going to be in demand from other services, whereas currently you have the, in the current provision, you have the, um, you have sufficient accommodation to accommodate groups within the archive service, whereas if this is going to be a multi-use room, then you are going to be competing with library and, and other and other services so it may not be as available as what we have at the moment so uh, perhaps you know that that kind of aspect needs to be looked at you know what is going yes. to be the demand and how is it going to limit the archive activities and access to those groups which Louise and and, and others are are referring to Yes, I, I think I think what it shows is this is incredibly complex, complicated decision. Yeah. Um, um, obviously, what's behind all this is not so much um, uh, the uh, we're moving to improve facilities because it's better. Is we're moving to a different venue because the council wishes to uh, dispose of the C Swansea Civic Centre, not that um, you know, we're, we're, we're investing in new 
archive facilities or archive library facilities it's that the, these functions need to be removed from the existing building because it's proposed to sell off that building um, i did make my very last point on the thing which i haven't got to uh, yet I, I hope by the way that you're you're okay we've probably run over the hour uh, because uh, we probably want to have a, more, more points but uh, I did speak with the chair earlier this week and she said it's more important that we keep going rather than you know we didn't just necessarily watch the clock uh, it should be recognized my final point in the uh, thing and I haven't got to that yet uh, it should be recognized and acknowledged from the start that this represents a physical downsizing for the public area and that the family history center will essentially disappear as a distinct area I think we just have to acknowledge that that that's the case but what really matters is those lockers and uh cloakroom facilities which are an essential part of the security arrangements for the archive archive search room uh if you're okay i'll go back to my prepared text because i need then need to go i'll start go back to sharing again and uh just share with you the strong room um Right, let me do. Let's see if I can. Hopefully, that's now switched to the archive strong room. So you're looking at a diagram or showing shelving here. Is is that right? Uh, yes, Ken. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so this is the archive uh, uh, strong room. Um, I'll just go back to my text actually so um and this refers back to the points that welsh government made which were probably a little way back in the uh, in the discussion uh it was noted at the at an early stage that the strong room opens directly onto a staff rest. so this is the main entrance to the strong room this is a staff corridor once again council black may have more information than I have but this is a uh, an agile working space for council staff I think it suggests other other people as well but there's uh, revenues and benefits are in there um, and from a security point of view uh, I made the point that this wasn't acceptable at, at an early stage essentially if these doors are open and you have uh, council staff going past uh, you know, somebody may put their head around the door saying, what's this or wander in if it looks as though it's empty or whatever. So it was agreed that a lobby would put, be put in here, a double set of doors and jumping ahead uh, when we go into talking about the thermal modeling. Um, it's also a matter of um, uh, trying to maintain the thermal inertia of the strong room, which I was really surprised this wasn't picked up by the architect. But essentially, you're going to have a corridor which is heated to office standards and you've got a strong room here which is meant to be a cool and dry area and you've got a single door there so every time that door opens a waft of um, uh, uh, warm air warm office heated air will come into the strong room and the uh, HVAC the heating ven ventilation and air conditioning will have to to deal with that in ingress of warm air now we're probably not going to have to have have much time to discuss the command nature example which i put in appendix one to the report but however that was built on passive house principles and the principle of an airlock is hugely important in passive house if you're familiar with those uh, those standards but essentially it's about minimizing the the flow of air um so that has been rectified but there there is the issue of the the means of communication between the um, uh, the strong room and the search room and you'll see there is the document lift there shown there which issues in the search room and also the, um, uh, uh, the, the general issue around the uh, capacity of the uh, strong room to hold the archive collections um, and obviously this this is subject to the information that Councillor Black has uh, said that this this is the size of strong room uh, that is shown on the, um, the plans here. It isn't big enough for um, 
25 years of expansion space uh, for the collections. Uh, Andrew did the figures only a day or so ago, actually, where uh, we've identified that it would hold the whole of the collections, um, but it provides 10% expansion space and an expansion rate of uh, 1% per annum. That's estimated that it would it would be full in 10 years. The reason that the error has occurred in the calculation of the shelving company is that we have a number of plan chests and also map, map cabinets. And I think the, um, the plans have been drawn up on the basis that the only thing that we hold are boxes. And if you've been down to the um, on a strong room tour, you'll you'll remember that we we have plan chests and also that many of the shelves are actually uh, occupied by volumes rather than boxes and uh, probably about a third of the um, shelving is actually um, volumes and they can be quite large as well so um, that's where the miscalculation has occurred so I've put that back to the MDT that um, the strong room will need to be larger than this Sorry, I've gone off script here, so I'm going, uh, but I think I've gone through everything relating to security. So essentially, uh, Kim, as I say, Kim, sorry. So, so, yeah. Sorry, Kim, well, appreciate this is um, because if the if the uh, cabinet report is including information that you've not had access to, but if it is to include the the miners and uh, archive and the jazz archive, then this strong room is going to be huge question marks over whether this strong room perhaps is big enough to take that collection as well. Well, I'm going to, I, I, I think that, that that's a, those are the questions that could be asked, yes. um, yeah. but I'm going to, I am going to make a guess that this, um, this, the whole of this floor may be a storage area because uh, one of the things that I did note from the outline planning documents, which were lodged this week was that the, 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 the outline planning re request showed the whole of this floor as archive, um, and I took that just to be indicative, but uh, it's a, an interesting question. Um, mm -hmm. That could obviously be brought out by uh, scrutiny and cabinet as to what exactly the revised plans are. Okay. Can I say, Chair, that there is no alternative plan with the Cabinet report, so it's difficult to know what's going on. But the fact that they're talking about three archives forcing the DWP out um, suggests that they will have a, a, a larger strong room. But we'll certainly ask that question in scrutiny. Thank you. Thank you. So I do apologise if some of this information is out of date. Obviously, I can only work work on the uh, the basis of the plans with which which with which have been provided and which have been agreed um, um, so um, uh, obviously there is further work to be done here yeah thanks Kim uh, Robert you've got your hand up yes yeah, so, so we, we had to take it Kim that you've not been seen any updated plans relating to the report that's due to go to cabinet no I did check before the meeting that um, whether these ground, uh, these floor plans were the ones that I should use in this in this meeting. So, uh, you know, this this represents what has been agreed, yeah. and obviously the Miss Selfridge building is shaded out there, and so on. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, well, what, you know, I think the, what we can there's, say there's clearly an issue that I need to pursue there as well. Yeah, Thank I you. Think, I think what we can say is that the. There needs to be further clarification before a proper decision can be made. I think that's probably the yeah, yeah. the way to um, approach this. That um, there, there's, a, yeah, there, there's, a, there's an issue with information sharing, which which I will uh, which I will pursue. The 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 same thing is actually without. Uh, um, I, I say that the Welsh government and TNA's um, uh, conclusions at the end of this. Uh, that's that's essentially what their um, uh, what their decision is. That broadly going ahead, recognising that the the right questions are being asked and the right work's being done, and we look forward to getting satisfactory um, answers to the questions that we've posed. Uh, but I will go on to thermal modelling because this. Uh, I have to say that I don't really understand the. Uh, the full discussion that has 
taken place with regard to thermal modeling. I do obviously understand the principle. Just to explain the principle, uh, the pro proposal should be capable of delivering delivering a stable temperature and humidity, which is within the range allowed for in the British standards. Um, just skip a bit there. Um, now, what we have ended up with is a slight disagreement between Chris Woods of the NCS, the National Conservation Service, and the mechanical engineer. Uh, and it's it's essentially an argument between the engineers um, uh, where the archivists and the uh, other, uh, other officers sort of tend to uh, 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 sort of leave it to the experts, really. Uh, Chris Woods, who's always thought that the um, uh, the archives strongly should be on the ground floor, um, and that that's not that's not been a possibility uh, th throughout, really, for reasons of you know this is a multi-use building. But uh, Chris Woods says I'm not in, in, in agreement entirely with the thermal modelling, as I expressed at the meeting, which I think is I'm not quite sure what the meeting is actually uh, uh, a meeting. The winter heating in the spaces below was not modelled; only equipment use and people presence in those spaces. The outcome was a model that suggested the temperature average was fractionally within the region required, just under 18 degrees C. But clearly, if the heating influence has not been fully modelled, then this average is more likely to be above the required figure. While the approach to cooling, the cavity spec, right, OK, I think I'm showing the uh, still showing the strong, strong. So what the architects has come up with is a cavity space around the archive search room, which essentially acts as a buffer between the more heated um, uh, office area and the uh, the cooler archive strong room. And that it's, it's been proposed that this cavity space should be super cooled, as it were, to to provide. Um, and I, I'm not 100 percent sure that I understand the um, the theory behind this. So as I say, it's this discussion between two mechanical engineers. Um, he says, well, the approach to cooling uh, is a good one if it is needed. The point is it should not be designed to be needed. Cooling the spaces outside to overcome a poor thermal model at design stage at a stroke saddles the authority with annual running energy, carbon and maintenance cost above those needed if the store were in a place that did not need it, i.e. the very things that the standard is trying to cover. By modelling thoroughly, including winter heating, the result would not be a compliant store at this design stage. So what Chris is essentially taking issue with is the thermal modelling report, which you'll get a copy of, which is by a member of the MDT, doesn't take into account that the building will be heated during winter and that heat tends to uh, travel upwards. So therefore all the the heating on the ground and first floors, the heat will travel upwards and some of it will percolate through the floor and into the um, into the archive store. And this hasn't been uh, taken account of. He also points out that the calculated annual average temperature at 18 degrees is right at the top of the, uh, the range that's acceptable for archive storage. If you been, I think everybody will have been around the archive strong and you'll notice immediately that the um, the archive storage area is cooler than um, the uh, um, uh, the average uh, temperature office temperature out, outside so uh, it's essentially a discussion between uh, two engineers um, and it should be noted that the NDT thermal modeling report is based on uh, the parameters, acceptable temperature parameters, 13 to 23 degrees C and 35 to 60% relative humidity, which is um, uh, certainly the 23 degrees centigrade in an archive store is uh, not um, an acceptable temperature as far as uh, I'm concerned. Now, obviously, that's, you know, that's the equivalent to central heating that's turned up quite high in <laughs> in my certainly in my house anyway um and 18 even 18 is uh you know the uh, the annual average temperature will be 18 which is yeah uh, it's slightly below the comfort temperature which we tend to associate with either 19 or 20 degrees 
Um, Welsh Government have reflected Chris's opinion in their response to Swansea Council. Um, I quote again, with regard to the proposals for structural works to ensure the environmental stability of the archive storage accommodation, these will need to be fully implemented. This includes ensuring that construction of the archive storage block achieves the state of performance in relation to building fabric air permeability to ensure that environmental conditions temperature and relative humidity can meet the requirements of relevant standards it is noted that even with these measures anticipated annual temperatures for the archive store are 17.89 degrees celsius as i say just under 18 um, which is uh, marginally, um, marginally below the upper limiting criteria of 18, de 18 degrees set by BS 4971. Mitigation for cooling measures should also there be, therefore be incorporated into the building design. So what um, the uh, Welsh Government is saying is that uh, there needs to be extra cooling to this area. Um, we know the caveats raised by Chris Woods of the NCS as expert advisor in these areas and the potential longer term running costs associated with maintaining the environment for the second floor storage location. We concur that the authorities' decision to locate the archival storage on the second floor may introduce compromises that are not within the spirit of the standards or of wider aims to reduce environmental impacts. And that ref ref reflect refers to the fact that the air conditioning will have to be are pretty powerful and working a lot of the time in order to uh, overcome the uh, the imbalance uh, you know whether it's heat heat from the office space around or uh, cooling effect or heating effect from the uh, radiation through the roof as well uh, heat heat gain and heat loss through the, the roof area we would therefore encourage the council to continue to look at this issue and how best to ensure that energy requirements can be minimized so I'm going to reach my conclusions here. So um, Welsh Government have indicated their broad agreement with the proposals, with the caveats that I've referred to above. Uh, I quote Welsh Government saying, we are content that the proposals for meeting the requirements of BS EN 16893, um, um, specification for location, construction and modification of buildings or rooms intended for storage or use of heritage collections, are broadly appropriate, but have a number of remaining queries and concerns. Any Welsh Government investment in the facility should also offer assurance around the sustainability of arrangements and value for money offered. We would therefore welcome further, further information on the following points. Uh, confirmation of the storage accommodation capacity and expansion space. Typically, a new archive repository allows for 25 years expansion space for ongoing collection development. Uh, confirmation that governance arrangements, noted, notably with regard to the joint agreement with Neath Patalbot County Borough Council, are such as to ensure the sustainability of the current service model. The National Archives followed this up with their response. Uh, we are grateful for the detailed work that has gone into the information provided on risk assessments, technical matters and the overall design. We have no objection to the project moving to the next stage, which will see the development of the proposed design in more depth in the specific areas identified. We look forward to hearing more about the plans as they evolve. At the time of writing, the following issues have been identified or remain unclear. So the proposed strong room space uh, will has been calculated as only holding enough expansion space for 10 to 11 years of expansion and of course that may that may be uh, not relevant if um, uh, if the other archive collections are going in I would imagine that the the uh, strong room has been um, uh, increased in size to accommodate those um, whether, uh, whether or not the strong can deliver the required thermal environmental stability is an unresolved matter. And as I say, it's really essentially between two, two experts, really. Um, what is clear is that 18 degrees C is the top, top of the acceptable range for archival storage. And that the, in, uh, when you'll see the uh, thermal modeling report summary, you'll see that the, the figure of 23 degrees is in there, which I, uh, I've never come across before, uh, and I, I ha, uh, I'm not quite sure where it's taken from. Uh, third issue that's unresolved is the location of the search room. 
if it is to be relocated, is it still possible to provide a secure means of access between the strong room and the search room? Uh, in any case, a safe route for trolling records will need to be established between the two. And fourthly, the, un the unresolved issue is the size of the search room. If it is not to be relocated, how can the service provide for a level of demand which will no doubt exceed its uh, the capacity of the search room? And how can it also provide reception facilities? If it is to be relocated, this will provide a much more reasonable solution, but the means of communication for transferring archives between the two areas needs to be established. Uh, I'll just make some final comments. I do want to look on the positive side uh, as well. Um, the location of the building is an excellent location. It's a city location, and it is one that will no doubt attract um, uh, improved customer footfall. Um, and there are distinct advantages in combining the local studies library and the archives in terms of customer convenience. And there's a certain amount of duplication between the two services. Although it is recognized space for each will be limited because this is a multi-use building. One distinct advantage is the opportunity for access to self-service items to be available during the extended opening hours planned for the building. So I'm thinking here of um, uh, some of the things which are currently available in the Family C History cent Centre. Um, obviously, the Family History Centre might not exist as such, but however, the uh, self-service items may be available for extended hours because um, uh, the library will be open much longer hours than the archive search room. It will also offer opportunities for closer working with the central library and flexibility of staff working between local studies facilities and, and the archives. Uh, the building will contain a multi-use education room so school and group visits can continue as before using this facility. As, as has been discussed it will have to be bought but um, it's quite possibly offering um, a high level of um, uh, an improved level of um, uh, c capability and capacity for school and group visits. It should be recognised and acknowledged from the start that this represents a physical downsizing for the public areas and the family history centre will essentially disappear as a distinct area. So I did say that earlier. Um, you know, it's, it's a replacement for an existing facility and it has to be recognised that it's the space is is going to be more more limited and uh, that the um, essentially uh, the family history center as a unit will will not be not exist uh, it's essentially it's a, an archive facility so it represents a a, a repurposing of the the archives to combine with the local studies which is not not necessarily a bad thing because we you know there's a huge overlap between local studies resources and archives resources things like maps photographs and so on um, however the space will be limited so that that concludes my note and um <coughs> Robert, should, i'll stop Robert a question. Presenting. Yes, thank you chair and it would be very useful to have the a copy of this note um in, in advance of the cabinet meeting, I, I, in terms of future capacity, um, looking at the, the cabinet report, and I know you you you're not privy to this, which, 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 which is a, an issue in itself. It says there that the South Wales Coalfields collection currently stored at the Emily Phipps building, plus the South Wales Miners Library, would be transferred to to a new facility, but not the archives held in Richard in the Richard Burton archives. Now, a lot of the Coalfield, um, uh, Coalfield collection archives are in Richard Burton, not not in Andrew Violet. Yes. So presumably they'd stay in, 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 in Singleton Park rather than being transferred to the new, um, uh, the new building. Yes. Am I right? Is that your, would that be, I mean, or has it been, has there been any discussion of that? There hasn't been any discussion. I'm going to assume that what we're talking about, uh, obviously the South West Miners Library is in a difficult position as well in that the, the university would like to sell off uh, the whole yeah. of the Hendra Oil and Estate. However, the Richard Burton Archives is under no pressure to move. It's, it's been, right. it was refurbished about 
10 to 15 years ago and, and is you know, very, very good. It's still looking very fresh and modern. I wouldn't imagine that there would be any pressure for, for that to be relocated. Because my, my reading of that would be that there'd be a, a, a big demand for book storage and, and, and other um, things as, as there is in, in currently in the Miners Library in Hendra Island. But the the minute books, the, the, the correspondence and South Wales Miners Federation and so on, which are in, um, you know, would, would require archival storage, would remain in, in Singleton. Yes. Yeah. Right. OK. Yes. As long as, yeah. as long as that's the that I'm, that I'm, I'm misunderstood uh, something. No, I, th I think that I think that uh, that's uh, obviously that's new to me, but that would yeah, yeah, I, yeah. that would be my understanding as well. Right. Uh, Councillor Rayner has her hand up. Thank you. Uh, can I thank him for taking us through his report? It it began off more or less well that we had got an extra year where we would be in this not quite fully accredited, but it was an extra year. Uh, and this is important, not just for the storage of documents, but more importantly, I think, because of retaining the um, archive as a local place of deposit. If we lose that, our two authorities lose the right to deposit our documents within the locality. We would have to find somewhere else to take them. It has become increasingly uh, apparent during this discussion that a document is going to cabinet which has not been shared with the archive service staff. Having looked at it myself, can I say without giving too much away, the report to cabinet tends to gloss over and make various assumptions on the fire situation and on security. We learn that possibly at the suggestion of the Welsh Government, but following talks with Swansea University and others, that additional archives may be moved into this building. And it's not clear to any of us just what the layout of the building will be to incorporate those two additional archives. It's quite clear on the present plans that the customer experience, people seeking to use the archives, is greatly reduced and inadequate. The report to Cabinet references a guesstimate of the extra space and suggests, well, another part of the proposal might be shifted, but it's not actually worked out in detail at all. So I, I find it really difficult to come to any conclusion here. I am pleased people are working together to try and find some of the solutions, but I think there is a considerable distance to go because as Chris pointed out at the beginning, Kim pointed out at the beginning, if we are to accept the, um, the compromise on the fire risk, that will put additional costings onto this project. I cannot find in the report to Cabinet any reference to that. But there's a very casual reference to, oh, we've managed to get four hours fire security by adding on a bit of cover and then adding on the sprinklers together, well, in fact, they will have to be working simultaneously, not one after the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is that is a case of concern for me that we are meeting today with another paper in the cabinet, which has clearly not been shared in detail with archives colleagues. I don't know if it's been shared with our colleagues in Neathport Talbot Council. And that does concern me because we are a joint service. Um, my conclusion at the moment is we have not got enough information. Things are changing fast. But I would say, have to say, 
that the report, insofar as I have seen it, going to cabinet, tends to be, shall we say, there is more in omission than in content that I would be happy to look at. And I do think, I'm sure Robert will be able to draw cabinet's response to that, but we have been on about this issue for several years and it has been all oh, poo pooed. You don't need them. It's all online. And now chickens are coming home to roost. And it's a rush against time of trying to reorganize things to maintain our accreditation for the benefit of both councils, to try and improve a customer experience, to try and ensure there is security, both fire and that other security issues. And this is all very rushed with publicity. Oh, it will be open middle of next year. I find this extremely concerning. Um, and I, I just have to thank Kim and his team for working on this. Presumably, have we got somebody from the university here who could add just what the state of play is with what the university think they're getting out of this joint partnership arrangement for archives? Not sure who's here. Yes, I think um, Louise, Louise Miskell is here, Jan. Well, I, I would be interested to hear roughly what their estimate of space is, um, both for storage, but also to access that. Because at the moment, the report that Kent has been able to provide on his uh, restricted knowledge and what we've got in cabinet papers, which are again restricted, is really very difficult to come to any conclusions. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. That was uh, a, 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 a very um, excellent, if I might say so, summary of, of all the committee's concerns. Thank, thank you for doing that. Um, Peter, you had your hand up. You're, can you unmute, please, Peter? Oh. Still can't hear you, Peter. Well, Pete. Maybe worth you leaving and rejoining, Councillor Rees, just to try. There's obviously an issue with your microphone. There we are. Um, in the interim, does anybody, uh, would anybody else like to make a comment? I um, don't know if, Louise, you want to make any comment um, from a university perspective. Can you hear me now, Chair? Oh, yes, Peter, yes. I, I, all I was going to say was uh, that I, I fully concur with Jen's uh, um, reservations. I, I'm not sure. I certainly haven't see, uh, been contacted about any proposals. I don't know whether Craig Craig uh, uh, has. Uh, so I, I, you know, from Neath Potaba's point of view, this is all new to me this morning. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, the information that uh, Kim has given is, is new to me this morning, and obviously he he he's, hasn't been kept in the loop either. So, you know, uh, so you know, I agree with Jen. It's difficult to come to any conclusion, quite frankly. Yes, thank you, Peter. Any other comments or observations? Uh, Councillor Black Scott is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was just going to say, Chair, in, in relation to the Richard Burton archive, which Robert raised earlier on, the report says the university uh, uh, preference is to keep them at Singleton Park. So I, I, I understand there's a separation between in the, the, Bert, the Burton archive is, is effectively, or the miners' archive is divided between the, the two. But that is the choice of the university, and I suppose the report also said there's no room for all the archives, which could be amalgamated in that building. So I think there are issues of space, even with the the uh, the new building, the, the other building being if that's purchased and added into it. So these are questions we, we need to ask on Monday. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, Lyndon. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I certainly agree with the points that uh, Jen made, and I have to say we don't always do that, but I, I certainly agree with the point she made. 
uh, and also the fact that I've been on the committee for over, what, four and a half years, and we were talking about this from day one. Yeah. So it's certainly been on the agenda, uh, you know, and, and, and no decisions have been made. But uh, as you say, it's now very important because of that accreditation. And also it's really important for local people to have access to that archive. And I, we want that archive to grow as well. Uh, you know, over over the years, because it is vital. It is our history and our heritage. Thank you, Lyndon. Any other comments or observations? OK, if, if, if there are no more, I'll just uh, reiterate that what I'll forward to Gareth the uh, the well, I've called it a technical note uh, that um, that I've been using here together with the revised uh, fire security and thermal modeling. I'll just do the summary report for the thermal modeling because it is uh, quite the full report's quite detailed. Yeah, Th thank you, Kim. Well, thank you all very much indeed. Um, I'm sure Gareth has been taking a note of all the issues that have been raised. Uh, should um, Peter or Robert wish to call upon them for appropriate questions for uh, scrutiny and cabinet. Uh, I think we've had a very good uh, discussion on the issues. Th thank you very much indeed, Kim, for your report. It was uh, extremely well presented. You um, honed in on all the key issues and really um, gave us uh, excellent information so that we are fully aware of what the situation is and what the issues are. And I think it's fair to say that the committee as a whole um, has real concerns about how these issues are going to be addressed in the future. So um, let's hope that uh, both the Cabinet Committee and the Scrutiny Committee will come to some um, resolution about these issues and um, we look forward to hearing what they are. But uh, th thank you again, Kim. Uh, it was, I say, an excellent report. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions. I think uh, we have had a very good debate on this matter, and I think our views are really very, very well articulated and very clear um, to, to all concerned. Um, so all that remains is for me to um, wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and a happy and peaceful new year. And Kim, would you please and convey... And a safe Christmas, uh, Chair. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And Kim, would you please convey to the archives staff our very best wishes for Christmas and the new year, and in particular, our thanks. We are here coming to the to the end of the year where they've had to contend with very, very difficult circumstances, and they've done absolutely sterling work throughout the year to keep the archive service going. I think... You know, we, we, we do recognise what they've done. They made a huge contribution. I think it's just testament to their dedication and commitment to the archive service. We are extremely grateful, as I'm sure are the public extremely grateful too, because without them, this vitally important service would have not been perhaps as accessible uh, and as uh, uh, and as available to people who have needed it. And I know they've stepped in at, at uh, times when people have been really desperate to get the information, which again reflects the importance of having an effective archive service. What we want as a committee, I'm sure going into the new year, is to have uh, accommodation, to have a venue, and uh, to have all the right things in place for our archive service, of which we are enormously proud and which has an outstanding reputation to continue well into the future and perhaps well beyond all the terms of office, which collectively we will be will be serving o over the next few years. You know, at least 25 years is, is what we're looking for, and that's what we want to achieve. So um, it's all about the collective good and about preserving our absolutely wonderful service. So thank you all very much indeed, and uh, look forward to the next meeting in March, which is March the 11th, I think. Uh, but hopefully we will get some information before then as to the outcome of both the Cabinet and the scrutiny committees as they debate the future of the archive service. So thank you all very much indeed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Bye-bye.